Five billion pounds of copper divided into two different deposits, the underground and the open pit. Nevada Copper is the next copper producer in North America. Not only are we fully permanent, which is unique in itself, we're going to be developing copper operation with a tremendous amount of upside potential outside of the underground operation. The possibilities are endless. Nevada Copper's Pumpkin Hollow project is going into production in 2019 at a time when supply is declining and demand is growing, leading to a deficit of up to 6 million tons of production per annum. It's the right mine, right time, right place. Behind me you can see the construction down the underground, which we're going to mine first. It's a very nice, tidy, modern, efficient structure that is geared for Easy mining, but very cost-effective mining. Same approach applies to the, what we're doing with the design of the open pit. The Pumpkin Hollow deposits are related to the, the big porphyry district we have here, and we're in the Scarn area the, on the side of the porphyry. Being a Scarn means they're usually higher grade, and a lot of times they're associated with precious metals, gold and silver. With the underground deposit, we right now we have an existing shaft, and we're down at 1,900 feet. We're right in the same uh, altered rock. We have mineralization there. We're very close to our body, uh, getting right to the high grade. That's really the advantage for the underground. Open pit, uh, it's still open, and we're drilling on it right now, and we're expanding it. That's the nice thing about the open pit. We're approaching development of Pumpkin Hollow from a staged approach. The first stage is finished construction of the underground. The next stage will be the construction and production from the open pit. We took a look at what is the most optimal project we need to build? And how do we get the most cash flow at the same time utilizing the least amount of capital? So it's really about cash optimization. We have all the permits in place for us to begin construction, which means that you as an investor are not gonna have to worry about long delays. You're not gonna have to worry about a lot of working capital tied up. You're not gonna have to worry about, about creep in costs due to permit modifications. Pumpkin Hollow is located in one of the best mining jurisdictions in the world. We're an hour and a half drive southeast of Reno. We're five miles from the historic mining town of Yarrington. We have highways, we've got rail, we've got hydro, we've got water. We are well set up to become the next leader in a copper district in Nevada. There's a lot of resource here, there's a lot of history here, there's a lot of copper here. Yeah, the Pumpkin Hollow project is part of the, the Yarrington district, which is a very famous copper district. People that live here now grew up with mining and they, they realized what a economic benefit it was to the community, so they're very supportive. Well, we've been working hand in hand with Nevada Copper for the last 10 years when they first came to Yarrington. Their promises were always kept. We're, we're very eager to see this project move forward uh, for the benefit of the whole community. So what we will do by bringing in 300 plus direct jobs, that'll create additional indirect jobs with services in town. 500 people in a community of 3,500 is a, is a huge impact. Copper is a big part of building infrastructure, electricity infrastructure. In 2017, for the first time in 15 years, global copper mine open fell. At the same time, demand is increasing due to global growth as well as electric vehicles, renewables, and energy storage. After years of low copper prices, there is a serious shortage of projects that can start production during this cycle. And that means there is a major opportunity with Pumpkin Hollow. So Nevada Copper's strategy is to become the next mid-tier copper producer and bring all this together into one big copper producing district. It's a great property, a great company. With the price of copper going up, it is just going to get better. We've been able to ramp up activities quickly because we've got a very good team who is very focused, very driven. This team is built to build mines. We also have a board of directors that includes some of the biggest names in the mining industry, including Tom Albanese, former CEO of Rio Tinto, and Matt Gilly. He's come from Barrett. He's had 20 years of experience where he's been building and managing 
underground and open pit mines. It's a brilliant combination of people with a lot of experience and institutional knowledge, totally focused on building and operating Pumpkin Hollow. Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us for a conversation is Matthew Gilly. He is the president and CEO of Nevada Copper, North America's next copper producer. Mr. Gilly, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Maurice. It's a great pleasure to talk to you this morning. Matthew, for first-time listeners, who is Nevada Copper, and what is the value proposition you present for investors? All right. Who is Nevada Copper? So Nevada Copper is a developing copper producer in western Nevada. Chief asset is Pumpkin Hollow, which is located near the town of Yearington. It's a fully permitted, shovel-ready copper project, greater than 5 billion pounds of copper. We're targeting initial production from the underground in late 2019, run by a, a team of mine builders, supported by strong copper fundamentals, and we will be the next copper producer. There's really like three legs to the value proposition. I'd like to talk about the first being the underground, and that's what our announcement earlier today really brings to light. That is the development of our underground operations. The second of the three legs to the value proposition is really about the open pit. That is, that is a deposit adjacent to the underground deposit that has a, uh, the potential and this really will be the next phase of growth for Nevada Copper. And lastly, the region of Yearington, which historically was a major copper producer from Anaconda. And there's a lot of potential in that region. So we see ourselves as the first mover with that first mover advantage in Yearington District. Nevada Copper just released some breaking news, which I know your entire team is proud to announce. What can you share with us? A very exciting day and a very monumental day for Nevada Copper. What we announced is that the Board of Directors for Nevada Copper has approved the construction decision and authorized the expenditure of $197 million to bring the underground and associated processing facility to full production. That, that work has started, but will now commence in full earnest, such that we're able to start producing concentrate in the fourth quarter of 2019. Now, let me be the first to congratulate here Nevada Copper on this monumental accomplishment. Mr. Gilly, what are the economics of the underground mine? All right, so, so for the underground, uh, we're looking at a, at a mine that at full production will be 5,000 tons a day, producing about 27,000 tons of copper and concentrate. The, the NPV at 5% is about $301 million. The yield as far as free cash flow is about $80 million per year over the first five years with about a 13-year mine line. Now, I understand that Nevada Copper has taken an extra measure of protection by adding a standby loan facility. Can you explain the benefits of this standby loan facility? Absolutely. So one of the, one of the real benefits, the, the positives of Nevada Copper is we have such a strong and experienced board of directors. And what they bring to this is, a lot, is knowing how to manage and mitigate risks. It's something that, that we feel very strongly about. And one risk for any project is making sure that you are fully funded towards the end when you are in your, uh, when you start to ramp up into production. This is, so this is a facility that was brought on by our, our largest single shareholder, Paula. It is a subordinated standby of up to $25 million, such that if there are any hiccups, if there are any needs for additional funding, we have that facility available ahead of time. It also allows Nevada Copper to be able to pursue that open pit and regional strategies like I alluded to in, in my previous response, such that we can uh, make, grow the company and really make it a broad-based company, not focusing solely on the underground. You know, not to undermine what we've discussed so far in today's interview, but does Nevada Copper have any updates on its pre-feasibility study? Uh, that's a good question. So, 
the, the schedule for the pre-feasibility study for the open pit is the first quarter, of really January of, tw of 2019. What we are doing right now is completing the preliminary engineering assessment, the PEA, for the open pit that we can insert into our current technical report. That PEA will really outline our strategy for the open pit. It's, it's markedly different than the previous strategy for the open pit, and that we're really focusing on a smaller capital expenditure, smaller pit, but focusing on the high-grade portion of the deposit. That, uh, that PEA will come out in, in this quarter. What it won't have is it won't have all of our current drilling. So as, as you know, Maurice, we've, we've been um, actively exploring on the property this year. We've completed 26 new holes. That assay data and that geologic interpretation is being worked into the resource model. And that material, that, that new information will go into the resource model with the submission of the PFS in the first quarter of 2019. Let's summarize here for our audience. The underground mine and the associated processing facility is projected to be in full production and start producing concentrate in the fourth quarter of 2019. Now at full production, that's 5,000 tons a day, producing 27,000 tons of copper concentrate. Uh, the yield, free cash flow, is about 80 million per year over the first five years. And we're looking at about a 13 year mine life. And the open pit construction is projected to begin in Q4 of 2020. Multi-layered question here. What is the next unanswered question for Nevada Copper? When should we expect results? And what determines success? Interesting question. So the next unanswered question for Nevada Copper would really be when do we bring that open pit online? When do we start to develop that? Uh, right now, we're planning on the end of 2020 to kind of start that construction. That's going to depend upon um, a lot of different factors. Um, what determines success for that was well, really shareholder value. Right? What, what is the right time to bring that on? What is the right configuration for that open pit? And how do we get the most shareholder value for the assets that we, that we own? If plan A doesn't work, what is plan B? So, so plan A is a, for the open pit, is a reduced volume focused on the high-grade copper mine. Really, what would cause that not to work would be a increase in copper price that would want us to, to, to develop that faster. So what we would do is uh, you know, pursue the necessary facilities that we can bring that open pit online sooner. That's really, plan B is actually a really good case, and that is that there's so much interest in copper that we actually want to accelerate the development of the open pit. Matthew, what keeps you up at night that we don't know about? What I focus on the most is, is personnel, making sure that I am able to bring together the right team to really bring this forward. I wouldn't say that it keeps me up in, at night, but it, it's something that I'm very focused on and something that is always in my mind. How, do, how can we bring on the, the highest quality talent and how can we develop that, that quality talent within the organization? Last question. What did I forget to ask? Well, you've been pretty thorough, Maurice. Well, you, thank we you, sir. We touched on the stand. <laughs> we touched on the standby facility, um, touched on the open pit. We, we also, you know, the, the region, you know, why, why are we excited about Yearington as a district? Historically, a very large producer, lots of interesting prospects in the region. And really, this, you know, Pumpkin Hollow is the base by which we will grow Nevada Copper. Yeah, Matthew, for someone listening that wants to get more information about Nevada Copper, please share the contact details. Absolutely. Uh, simple contact details, nevadacopper.com. And there's a lot of information in there. You'll be able to see our, our latest investor presentations and really get a, a, a good understanding of what I've touched on today in this discussion. Now, for our audience today, we wish to remind you that Nevada Copper trades on the TSX symbol NCU. And on the OTC symbol, NEV, 
DF. For additional inquiries, please contact Richard Matthews at 877 648 8266. Again, that number is 877 648 8266. Or you may email R Matthews at NevadaCopper.com. And last but not least, please visit our website, provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. Matthew Gilley of Nevada Copper, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.